Yes, we're talking about that Robert E. Lee, the general, who lost. Unfortunately, it wasn't just the general who lost. It was all the women and children of the South who lost as well. And this is an example. Now, Lee's own family fared rather better because of, of course, his rank and his fame and how everybody so loved him that others did without so that his family might survive. The He was offered the college presidency of a particular college in Virginia, Washington and Lee, I believe. In any case, he got a house and some land with that, and his future was more or less assured. Other Southerners didn't fare quite so well, so I might sound a bit ungracious toward his family in this thing. However, they did help where they could. Now, everybody doesn't realize that life was a lot tougher back then and that these fine southern bells, as they were, no longer had servants and had to do the cooking, the cleaning, the washing, the harvesting, the planting, and all of that all by themselves. So her, their little white hands got a bit messy back then. Such a shame. But they weren't pulling plows, managing horses when they had a horse, and attempting to do all of it as your average northern woman was doing when her men won off to war. That's right. Nevertheless, they managed to survive. And Mrs. Robert E. Lee began keeping her little housekeeping note-keeping book on how to cook, how to make uh, a cake. Oh, what an endeavor it was. Washing, taking a bath, everything was, was a trial. Everything. You had to find the water. You had to lug the water. You had to heat the water. Somehow with the fire over a fire or on the stove, innumerable pots that you had to lug up the steps or down the hall to wherever the bathtub was. And then you had to clean up afterwards. Just taking a bath was a huge endeavor. Washing clothes, it was all my word. Jesus, it was a lot of work. Just putting sugar in your coffee or finding coffee was a lot of work. Sugar used to come in rock hard lumps. You needed a sugar hammer, a deadly weapon, by the way, that features in one of Agatha Christie's novels. You had to have a sugar hammer to just bust it to bits. And basically, it had the weight of a 50 pound sledge just to bust the sugar because it came as a solid mass. Everything came in burlap sacks. No, you did not have properly ground flour. You had to check it for weevils and whatnot. You still do. But, you know, throw it in the freezer and you're fine. They didn't have freezers. They didn't have refrigerators. They didn't have washing machines. They didn't have vacuum cleaners. <clears throat> there was very little equipment. And yet they were expected to turn out magnificent meals. Take 10 eggs, whip them. Well, with what? There was no whisks. You took a bundle of sticks and tied it together and used that. 
It's ridiculous. And the weights. Nothing was standardized. You didn't have cups and teaspoons and tablespoons. You just generally used what you had. You didn't have packets of yeast. You didn't have baking flour. You didn't have packets of gelatin. You had to boil your calf's feet. You had no way to keep meat fresh unless you smoked it. And that involved work as well. I mean, the whole thing. It was just ridiculous. Couldn't go down to a grocery store and pick up a couple of steaks. No. That isn't how it worked. You had to buy a cow. And butcher the cow. And use as much of that cow as you possibly could. Make your own clothes. Or, you know, you could weave it yourself, I suppose. But the new factory looms were just coming in then, so you did have something there, but still. Life was much harder back then in the Civil War. Salt pork. Oh, Lord. Anyway, this book is of historical value. But ultimately, I wouldn't try many of the recipes in it. Some of them were downright poisonous. Especially medical. Don't. No. Still. You get a great deal of history. And that in itself is a value. Thank you for watching. And please come again.